Hey everybody, welcome to another Making Stuff video. Today I'm going to be talking about the CNC plasma machine and I know a bunch of you guys said you wanted to see it run so we're going to watch that machine run and I've had this thing for over a month now and I've made several things with it and it's, it's made the, the, the signs and, and all the little projects that I've had. It's done a great job, but I have had a few little minor problems with it. So we're going to watch it run and then I'll explain some of these problems that I had and then the solutions that I came up with to overcome those problems. All right, so let's start out and let's make a sign here on the plasma cutter. And what I'm doing there is I'm just getting a little cut out with a magnet, just pulling that out so it doesn't get hung on the torch. And I've already realized at this point that the sheet metal is bending. You know, the heat from the torch is bending the metal. So I've got this stick and I'm trying to push it down. And you can see, I think right here, yeah, see the torch turns itself off and it does it again right there. So these are the little things I'm trying to combat here with the stick by holding that metal down. But uh, it's not really doing that good of a job because you can see the metal with the video sp sped up. You can see the metal uh, rising and lowering with the torch. And what that is is the torch is just pushing the metal down and it, it's wanting to warp up. So uh, the sign does finish here and I am able to go back and uh, use Linux CNC, the run from here command. Uh, I'm able to go back and re-zero the torch where the uh, letters didn't get cut out there at the top. Uh, the sign says diesel parking only, and I think like the I and the E in diesel uh, messed up. Uh, you'll also see here at the very end, it doesn't want to, okay, it's cutting the holes there. Like I said, this is a sign. So those are the mounting holes. Now it's going to cut the actual rectangular part of the sign. You can see it's already turned itself off. So these are the things I can go back and fix, uh, but it's very time consuming. So here you can see I did go back. I was able to fix it. I was able to save the, the metal and everything so it, it wasn't scrap. And uh, here I'll just flip the sign over and show you that, you know, I'm getting better cuts, but there is some dross on there. And uh, I'll go over that here in a minute, too. All right, so here I'm cutting out uh, the Johnson sign for the farm table. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to that right up here in the corner. Uh, a lot of people have not looked at that video and it would make Mrs. Making Stuff very happy if you go and look at her new dining room table. And here uh, you can see that it, it did cut out. Everything worked fine on that one. It was uh, small and it didn't warp very much and there's not very much dross on there. Although there is a little bit, but that does improve. And you'll also notice that I started putting water in the pan at this point because I was thinking maybe that would help keep the metal from warping. And it did help a little bit, but it didn't completely stop it from warping. And here I'm going to start on a sign for a friend of mine. And I realize here in just a second that I forgot to put the ground clamp the ground clamp is actually dangling in the air and I'm surprised it's even cutting at all but you can see it's not piercing the metal because there's no water uh, coming up through the uh, cuts there so I think yeah right here I realized what was happening and I stopped the process and so I'm going to put the ground clamp on here and we'll start over again so here's the ground clamps on and it's doing much better. You can see the water's coming through the, the cuts there. And it's uh, doing a much better job with the ground clamp on. Now, I do have water in the pan at this point, And I, I realized that uh, I didn't need to fill the water all the way up to the top. And there you go. You can see it, it missed a letter there. Uh, but I don't need to fill the water all the way to the top because the compressed air that 
blows through the cuts does a very good job of splattering it all over the place and that's one of the reasons I didn't use the uh, water for such a long time is because it made such a mess I, you know it gets everything wet and the floor is all wet and the machines all wet but uh, I, I realized that um, it's not really that bad and I'll explain that here in a second but uh, here the sign finishes and I'm able to save the sign again by going back and uh, right here uh, you go in the G code and you just pick the line you want to start at and you right click on it and you say run from here and you do that and it'll just start from that specific point in the G code and that's how I'm able to go back and fix these problems but you'll see here that everything's wet it, it just makes a mess everything's dripping with water but what I realized was you know if I don't use the water it does make a mess so here it is all over the floor and it just it's this fine dust and if I go inside and come back the next morning the fine dust is still there if I got the water splashed all over the place I come back the next morning and the water's gone because it evaporated so I've chose to use the water rather than the, have the dust all over everything and so here's the uh, sign that I just cut out and you can see just from cutting that out it's warped the metal about three quarters of an inch but I was able to save the sign uh, and there's not a whole lot of dross on the back there there's still some there's still some dialing in that I'll do here on the next sign on the feed rate and that will improve the dross greatly And then here's the piece of metal. You can see it started out straight, and when you hold it up to the camera like this, you can really see that bend in it. So this is what I'm fighting against, uh, trying to make these cuts without a torch height controller. So here, this is that same bent piece of metal. I just wanted this piece of metal gone. I had another sign I had to make. Uh, so I've got a 55-pound weight and the piece of railroad track on there trying to hold it down. Uh, you can see the water level is not as high in the pan because I realized that you just really you don't have to have a full pan of water to get all the benefits of uh, having the water in the pan. So here we're just cutting out the sign, and you can see I've got my stick here. But I quickly realized that what happens on this sign is that the slats in the water pan line up perfectly with some of these letters and the sign kind of gets a little tack welded to those slats and that does a really good job of holding it down and uh, I didn't really have any issues with this sign here and uh, I realized that I don't really need the stick and then I just pull it away there and then just watch the machine cut And I don't know if you hear that squeaking noise uh, when the, the torch goes down. That's in the ball screw, and I have oiled and greased that thing. And it's just that one little area that it just wants to squeak when it passes over it. And I really don't know what to do to get rid of that squeak. And it's, it's, if it's annoying to you on the video, it's even more annoying uh, in person. So I may have to get a, another ball screw for the machine, too. And here I'm, you can see I'm holding that corner down with the stick, but it's really not necessary because um, this is staying down on its own pretty well. Alright, so there the signs finished and I realized that it's pretty much tack welded to the slat so I'll just take the stick and kind of beat on it there for a second to try and break everything loose and it, it does break some of it loose there but uh, I eventually break it free and then I've, I've played with the feed rates on the machine again and this time I think I've got it dialed in pretty good 
Uh, here's the front of the sign, and then on the back, there's almost no dross. There's a few little spots, like uh, right here on the O, right there. There's a like a piece of dross there. That may have been where it got tack welded to the the slat. But uh, all in all, it's doing pretty good. All right, so here's what I've decided to do about the CNC plasma machine. When I first built it, I decided not to put a torch height controller on there to save a little bit of extra money. Well, it turns out that that little bit of extra money is well spent because it's very time consuming to go back and fix all the little problems that arise from not having the torch height controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to order all the parts that I need to put the torch height controller on the machine and in a future video we'll put that torch height controller on there and see how well it works. If you like the video please give me the thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber please hit that subscribe button and thanks for watching. to build an air conditioner for a future video. Man, it's hot out here.